Thanks for tuning in to tonight's Dogman Stories. Tonight we are doing the state of Florida for our Encounters Per State project. As you heard, episode 16 was also in Florida in the Everglades. And also it was a follow-up on the encounter back in episode 10. If you haven't heard it, check it out. Also, if you would like to support the channel, you can find the support button on the main Dogman Stories YouTube channel page. Just click support and go from there. And I would like to thank all of you for the past month. It was amazing. What was only a hobby in the beginning has turned into an actual show that you guys apparently would like to hear every week. Which is very amazing. I'm really amazed and grateful and blessed and overjoyed. We've got almost 1,400 subscribers in one month. It's amazing. With that said, thank you to everyone for what you've done. And without further ado, Dogman Stories, Episode 17, Peekaboo. Hello, my name is Cara. I now reside in Mississippi. At the time of my encounter, I resided in Naples, Florida. I was a student in college at the time, so there were three of us that resided at the residence. The home was located near Tomato Road. The area is located near three or four wildlife areas that borders Highway 41 and Interstate 75 and Route 29. To give an idea of the area without giving you my address. The encounter happened in 2014. I was home alone at the time. It was around 7.30 p.m. The sun was still up, but was starting to set. I had been hearing someone around the house that night, but I thought it was just the neighbors having the nightly drunk cookout. Every night they drank and sang, and they would stumble around drunk and always ended up pissing and usually hitting my house for whatever reason. But around 7.30, I started hearing someone roaming around. I can't remember how I seen something, but I do remember catching a glimpse of hair. I said to myself, what the world is that? So I got up on the couch and put my laptop up and went to the door. I didn't see anything, so I went out on the deck. I kept hearing something running around through the woods. It was as if kids were running around the house and messing, and as soon as I come out on the deck, they would run to the woods. So I just assumed kids. Oh well, so I went back in and started working on my paper. Time had passed with no incident. The door opened. It was Leah. She had came home from work early. She didn't feel good. We sat and chatted for a while. It was 9 p.m. and someone started throwing little rocks at the window that we were sitting at. We could barely see outside. It was about dark. I could see something outside, but I couldn't tell who or what it was. I thought it was one of the drunk neighbors throwing rocks trying to get our attention, so we went out to the deck to see who it was, but they were gone, and the neighbors weren't even home, so that was very odd. I looked around trying to process what was going on. I assumed someone was playing a joke on me, so I started to get a little angry. I hollered a few things that kids really don't need to hear. Anyhow, I went back in, told Leah. She just laughed. We decided that we were getting hungry, so I started cooking. I was standing at the kitchen sink when I seen someone run in front of the window. Them darn kids. I know it was them. I left the porch light on. I threw the rag down and went out on the deck. Nothing. I heard something. Someone was at the trash cans. Oh my God, why is someone eating out of the trash can? Leah came out. I told her to look. We both saw someone bent over our trash cans, digging stuff out of it and throwing it on the ground. Hey, you need to get out of our trash and pick up what you threw out. The person stopped digging and looked up at us. I couldn't make out who it was, but it, he appeared to be very hairy. I tried to look harder. Hello, can you hear me? They never said anything. He was about 75 to 100 feet from us. We had the trash cans away from the house because critters might get in them. And we just didn't want no gators right up at the house. Hello, I know you hear me. He was looking right at me. He finally started walking towards us. 
He looked as if he was covered up with a blanket. He started to come into view the closer he got. I just stared. Who is that? It wasn't a human. It was an animal. A very big animal. We seen it good when it was about 30 feet from us outside. It walked up into the light when it was walking up the driveway. We screamed and ran back into the house. I knew what it looked like, but I didn't say it until we noticed it was at the back door, standing right there. This thing was standing at our back door with its face on the window. It seemed to have its entire face mashed up against the window, looking in. Its eyes looked like a German Shepherd, a sad German Shepherd. It was smiling at us. It wasn't really scary. I wasn't scared. I was more fascinated by the creature. It didn't look like most of the pictures I've seen. Not scary looking. It looked like a bear and wolf mix. It was very unique and a beautiful creature. It wasn't until it put its hands on the door that I freaked out. It had hands with black shiny claws, lizard claws on a human hand. Just a lot bigger. There was a stench that was lingering in the kitchen. I assumed it was the smell of the creature. The air unit was right beside it, and its smell must have been coming through the vents. My roommate was horrified. I really don't know why it didn't scare me. I didn't know what it was until I started listening to YouTube shows. Now it frightens me to know what this thing is capable of. I guess it's like any animal. Some predators are man's best friend. Bears, lions, tigers, etc., so I would say it could be possible that this thing was friendly. It was eating out of the trash and my cat was just sitting on the porch railing like it didn't even care about this thing. Nor does this th thing care about my cat. It wasn't as big as I've heard they are. It was maybe five to five and a half feet tall. Its fur was very nappy and scraggly. It was breathing hard with its tongue hanging out the side of its mouth like it was hot just like a dog. It had been about 98 degrees that day. I do remember joking to my roommate about giving it some water, and she went off at the thought of me opening the door. I snapped a lot of photos, but I never got it. I guess with the kitchen light on and it being dark outside, it was a constant blur, and the picture just seemed to get the flash, which made me very angry. I was very disappointed. It wasn't until... It ran across that I realized that this was in fact a dog man. It had backed up and ran across the porch and that's when I realized that that's what it was. But I ran across a picture on your show of the white wolf with the human body and that's the closest thing I've ever seen to a resemblance especially by the way that it ran across my porch. It seemed to be playing at that point in time, but then it came back and pressed its face up against my door. I remember very well what it looked like. It stood at the door for like 30 minutes. I went to get my laptop to record the animal, and as soon as I got back, it was gone. I was angry. I wanted proof, and I have it in my eyes, but yet I cannot prove it. I didn't sleep at all that night, and when Kelly returned home, that's my third roommate, she had mentioned someone running across the road in front of the third car in front of her on the road we lived on, but she didn't see anything outside on her way in the house. If I had to guess, this creature looked exactly like the photo I told you about, but with brown, black, and blondish looking fur, matted and nappy, dirty smelling, five to five and a half feet tall, 150 to 200 pounds. I could see bones and ribs, and you could see muscles, but I think it was malnourished instead of built, like a bodybuilder. Instead of the muscles being there, I think it was just skinny. I felt really bad for it. It smelled horrible. I've wondered many times if I would have opened that door, if it would have hurt me. It, what if I would have fed it and gave it some water? I just wonder if, you know, maybe it was nice. I don't know. It had a nub tail. The length of the tail was weird for the size of its body. 
it was only about a foot long and maybe two or three inches wide, which I considered weird for how big this animal was. It kind of reminded me of them cats that just have a little bitty nub. It was basically that comparison, this huge animal with a nub tail, basically. But this particular animal appeared to be needing help instead of being dangerous. I wish it had come back, but it never did. I put food out on the porch every night after that, but I never saw it again. I know some may say I'm crazy, but not all animals are killing machines. Some just want love, compassion, and a personal person to love on. I personally think this could have been one dog man that was friendly to humans. I hope they're discovered soon. Thanks for listening. Well, guys, that was a short story, but I think that's amazing. This lady wasn't scared, and she felt compassion for this animal. She realized that this animal wasn't dangerous, and it needed help. But, you know, some predatory animals are our friends, but I would be scared to take one from the wild like that, so it's probably a good thing she didn't open the door. Well, everyone, that concludes the state of Florida, the Encounters by State event that is all we got for the sunshine the sunshine state but before we go i would like to read you a little segment out of this werewolf encyclopedia that i got okay guys i got this werewolf encyclopedia and what i'm gonna do is every time we have a show i'm going to read a paragraph out of this it's very interesting stuff this particular segment is called silkies the silkies are the seal people who can shape shift and appear in human form resuming their true forms only when they wish to travel through the sea. The silkies are among the small number of gentle shapeshifters desiring to live harmoniously with the fisher folk of the Orkney and Shetland Islands. They often take human spouses and produce children who occasionally have webbed hands and feet and who are always born with a love for the sea. John Sells, one of the screenwriters of The Howling, 1981, wrote and directed an enchanting film about the Silkies and the secret of Rowan Anish, 1994. Sources are the Lazary Dictionary of World Folklore, New York, Lazarus, 1995. So that concludes tonight's episode of Dogman Stories, episode 17, Peekaboo, Florida State. Thank you and good